In the latest in Iran, 29 prisoners were hung in a single day. A 22-year-old woman was detained and beaten up for not wearing the hijab properly. In Iran, the term harsh punishment takes on a whole new meaning. Forget traffic tickets or community service. It's all about the extreme. These harsh punishments, like amputation for theft and stoning for adultery, aim to instill fear instead of just delivering justice. These are the 13 most brutal and harsh punishments, with a touch of medieval cruelty that the Iranian citizens have to suffer. Hanging for protest. In Iran, the government often uses the death penalty for many things. To control and scare off protesters, the government uses harsh penalties. These include public hangings. Secret courts sometimes sentence peaceful marchers and activists to death. They are accused of waging war against God. This heinous practice aims to instill fear and stop protests. Protesting is now a dangerous effort. On 8 January 2024, Iran hanged a 21-year-old man, Amireza Ajam Akrami, in public in Sharud, a northern city. This execution was notable. It was the year's first public hanging. It showed the regime's use of hanging to control society. The director of the Iran Human Rights Organization criticized the conduct. He called it inhumane, cruel, and degrading. He noted that public executions aim to punish and scare the public. Iran's harsh response to the opposition was clear on 10th January, 2024. The state killed at least 29 people in one day. This mass execution involved 26 individuals. They were hanged together at Gazel Hassar prison in Karaj, near Tehran. In addition, three men were executed in Karaj's city prison. Two Afghan nationals were among those executed. The mass killing followed global outrage at Iran's brutal executions and poor human rights. One of those hanged was accused of spreading corruption on earth. This charge is based on claims that, during mass protests after Masa Amini's death, Gobadlu killed a police officer. The protests, sparked by Amini's death in police custody, have faced harsh crackdowns by Iranian authorities. They have used capital punishment to deter dissent. The Iranian government wants to instill fear among the citizens who are forbidden from even aspiring to live a life of freedom. The government holds opponents accountable, bans protests, and tightly controls the public. These executions are not just revenge. They are a warning to anyone thinking of defying authority. Execution for removing hijabs. In Iran, removing a headscarf in public can lead to severe punishments, even execution. Women who ignore the strict dress code, requiring a headscarf, are seen as undermining the Islamic regime. Those caught in this behavior may be charged with spreading corruption on earth, a capital offense. This drastic measure shows the regime's will to enforce its norms, even at the cost of human lives. The tragic murder of Mahsa Amini in September 2022 drew global attention to Iran's strict hijab laws. Amini, a 22-year-old Kurdish woman from Sakez, Kurdistan, had flown to Tehran to see her brother. On 13 September 2022, Iran's morality police arrested her for wearing her hijab improperly. What was supposed to be a minor offense quickly became fatal. Eyewitnesses later said she was beaten inside the police van. Iranian authorities first said she had a heart attack and a brain seizure. But physical evidence told a different story. Hacktivists stole medical images. They showed Amini had a cracked skull bleeding, and brain swelling. These injuries indicate severe trauma, not heart failure, as officials reported. Amini was taken to the hospital but fell into a coma. She died on September 16th. This caused an uproar in Iran and abroad. The public reacted quickly and fiercely. Amini's death sparked protests against Iran's hijab rules and the crackdown on women's rights. Women in Iran began publicly removing their hijabs in protest, and males joined in sympathy. The Iranian authorities saw the protests as a threat to their control. They responded with brutal crackdowns on the demonstrations. 
The United Nations Human Rights Council determined that Amini's death was the result of physical mistreatment she endured while in morality police custody. The study blamed Iran for her death, claiming that the government sought to conceal the facts and frighten Amini's family, rather than conducting an unbiased inquiry. Furthermore, the investigation discovered evidence of severe human rights breaches during Iran's reaction to protests, many of which constituted crimes against humanity. What makes these situations more heartbreaking is that many of the women facing severe sentences, including execution, are not even political activists. Masa Amini was a shy, introverted young woman. Her family saw her as having no political experience. She had just graduated from high school and was about to join university, where she hoped to study law. Her only crime was that her hair slipped out from behind her veil. From international celebrities to politicians, everyone was shocked and displeased by what happened to Amini. U.S. President Joe Biden, in the annual speech of world leaders to the United Nations in September, referred to the situation of women in Iran and Amini's death and vowed solidarity with Iranian women. On October 26, 2022, women foreign ministers from a dozen countries, led by Canada's Melanie Jolie, decried Iran's brutal crackdown on women's rights. In a joint statement, they said, as women foreign ministers, we feel a responsibility to echo the voices of Iranian women. Celebrities also showed support for Iranian women and their right to bodily freedom. Actress Leah Remini wrote on Twitter, killing of Masa Amini is unacceptable under any circumstances, but the fact that she was arrested for wearing an inappropriate hijab makes it even more appalling. J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter novels, posted on Twitter, then the rest of the world needs to keep saying her name. Mahsa Amini died aged 22 in police custody because she violated hijab regulations. Solidarity with all Iranians currently protesting. Following Amini's murder and the following demonstrations, nations and institutions, such as the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the European Union, sanctioned Iran for human rights breaches related to his death and the ensuing protests. Stoning for adultery. Stoning to death is one of Iran's harshest punishments, especially for adultery. This procedure involves burying the condemned person up to their waist. They are then stoned to death. The stones are large enough to cause severe pain, but they are small enough to prolong the agony. This makes the execution both lethal and excruciatingly slow. This medieval punishment shows the strict enforcement of Sharia law across the country. An Iranian court sentenced a woman to death by stoning for adultery in 2023. The woman's a trainer at a women's gym. Her husband found her with another man in their home. This implicated her. The Iran newspaper reported that the husband found his wife with multiple men he learned this after placing surveillance cameras. Iranian law allows appeals of such judgments, but stoning is a possible penalty. This shows the grim reality for those accused of adultery in the country. There is a legal way sometimes to reduce stoning's punishment on appeal. However, the rule remains a source of contention in the world community. Despite its brutality, conservative leaders support stoning. Javad Larijani, an Iranian politician and ex-ambassador, is among them. They claim it promotes family values and the sanctity of marriage under Islamic law. This defense shows the deep cultural and religious roots that allow this cruel punishment to continue. Hoda Jabari's story shows, in a scary way, how these rules might affect lives. Hoda was 22 years old when she fell in love with a man she met at college. The pair intended to marry, but the man's family opposed it, so their plans were put on hold. Regardless, they maintained their connection in secret. Iranian officials eventually imprisoned both. They subjected Hoda to a virginity test. It is a degrading technique used in cases of alleged adultery. Hoda faced the horrific threat of being stoned to death 
as many accused women do under Iranian law. A few days later, her family helped to release Hoda. But this medieval punishment forever changed her life. Fearing for her safety and facing execution, she sought refuge in Istanbul. Hoda's tale is one of several that highlight the dangers that women accused of adultery face in Iran. Though she escaped the threat, many women face a harsh reality. They suffer anguish and risk stoning in similar situations. Execution for Homosexuality In Iran, homosexuality is not just frowned upon. It's a crime punishable by death. In Iran, a strict interpretation of Sharia law is used. It imposes the death penalty for same-sex intercourse. The death sentence in these cases shows the regime's hardline stance on LGBTQ issues. It also highlights the severe persecution of rule breakers. The human rights activists news agency reported on the execution of two gay men. Their names were Merdad Karimpur and Farid Mohammadi. This sentence was carried out in Marage, 500 kilometers northwest of Tehran. Their punishment was severe. It showed the Iranian government's commitment to its anti-LGBTQ laws. The executions in Marage are part of a troubling pattern. In July of the previous year, two more men were executed in the same city on charges of same-sex activity. These episodes are not unique, but rather part of a larger pattern of violent repression. Statistics show Iran hanged 300 people last year. Most were for homosexuality or moral crimes. In 2021, the Iranian government sentenced 85 people to death. This shows a disturbing uniformity in its handling of crises. Iran's laws and religious beliefs strongly support the death penalty for homosexuality. Same-sex relationships are illegal in Iran. They violate Islamic morals. The legal system, influenced by fundamentalist beliefs, treats homosexuality as a serious crime. It deserves the harshest punishment. This harsh approach reflects wider views on LGBTQ people in Iran. Being openly gay can result in the death penalty, and the Iranian officials stand by this law despite international uproar. In a press conference held in Tehran in 2019, between Mohammad Javad Zarif, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Heiko Maas, Minister of Foreign Affairs, openly gay German journalist Paul Ronsheimer of the tabloid Bild asked Zarif, why are homosexuals executed in Iran because of their sexual orientation? Swing to which Zarif seemed to affirm that execution of gay people takes place by saying that his society has principles and we live according to these principles. These are moral principles concerning the behavior of the people in general. And that means that the law is respected and the law is obeyed. Blasphemy, punishable by death. Iran is a constitutional Islamic theocracy. Its official religion is the doctrine of the Twelver Jafari school. Iran's law against blasphemy derives from Sharia. Blasphemers are usually charged with mafsed filars, which means spreading corruption on earth, or hiraba, enmity against God. Iran is one of the few nations in the world where insulting the holy prophet, Sab al-Nabi, is punishable by death. Although executions for blasphemy are infrequent, the criminalization of blasphemy in Iran's penal code is deeply alarming for religious minorities. Iran's laws target several religious groups, including Zoroastrians, Jews, and Christians, as well as atheists and non-recognized minorities, including Baha'is, Sabian Mandayans, and Yarsanis. On May 8, 2023, Iranian officials killed Youssef Mirad and Sadrola Fazeli Zareh for blasphemy. The two guys allegedly participated in a channel on the secret messaging software Telegram that criticized Islam and its prophets. Other high-profile blasphemy verdicts include a five-year prison sentence for Mohsen Namju, who allegedly mocked the Quran in a song, and the death penalty for writer and photographer Sohail Arabi, who allegedly made derogatory Facebook remarks about the prophet. Arabi currently lives in enforced exile within Iran, and Namju is in self-imposed exile in New York City. To make things worse, 
Iran amended its penal code in 2021, substantially restricting religious minorities' human rights, particularly the rights to free expression and religion and belief. According to Article 499 Baas, anyone who insults Iranian ethnicities, divine religions, or Islamic schools of thought with the intent to cause violence or tensions in the society, or with the knowledge that such consequences will follow, may face punishment ranging from a monetary fine to imprisonment. The ambiguous wording and scope of this article provide the Iranian authorities unrestricted authority to enforce these laws at their discretion and to abuse the law in a discriminatory manner, subjecting religious minorities to arbitrary detention, intimidation, and harassment. Amputation for theft. Iran's strict application of Islamic Sharia law allows amputation for theft. While this type of punishment is uncommon today, it remains in the legal system and has been used in the past. Public amputations, meant to deter crime, were once common. Now, they are rare. The practice is based on a strict reading of the Quran and Hadith. They allow removing hands and feet for certain crimes, including stealing. Iranian courts have ordered hand amputations for stealing. For repeat offenses, they ordered cross amputations, which remove a hand and a foot. There are now fewer, but between 2000 and 2020, some were punished for offenses like robbery and theft by removing their limbs. This tactic often targets the most vulnerable. It includes the destitute and foreign workers. This raises questions about fair sentencing. In early 2008, five criminals had their right hands and left foot severed in a week. This was a process known as cross amputation. The New York Times says doctors monitored the victims during the process. They aimed to control bleeding and infection. It shows how far the government would go to carry out the sentence, even if it meant handicapping the offenders. The Iranian leadership says the practice is a divine punishment. It aims to deter severe crimes and maintain order in a stability-valuing society. Officials say these sanctions aim to uphold justice. They want to prevent future crimes due to the sanctions' public nature. In a hyper-conservative nation like Iran, Islamic values shape the law and government. This argument is often used to explain the harshness of punishments. However, International human rights organizations have regularly condemned Iran's practice of amputation. They claim that physical mutilation is an inhumane punishment. It violates fundamental human rights, like freedom from cruel, humiliating treatment. Critics note the long-term effects of such punishments. They leave people crippled and unable to integrate into society. The stress and cost of losing a limb hinder any chance of rehab for the condemned blinding as retribution. In Iran, forced blinding is a harsh revenge for some crimes, especially violent ones. This severe punishment follows Sharia laws, an eye for an eye approach. It aims to match the damage caused by the guilty person. In recent years, this brutal form of justice has been used often in acid attack cases. These attacks irreversibly damage the victim's vision a spectacular case of this approach was a man convicted of blinding another person in an acid attack. The crime took place five years ago in Calm. The assailant splashed acid on his victim's face. It caused irreversible blindness and disfigurement. The Iranian court, seeking retribution, sentenced the attacker to have his eyes removed. This case was a notable and widely known example. Norway-based NGO Iran Human Rights said Iran's medical practices are barbaric and immoral. Doctors collaborate with authorities, betraying their Hippocratic Oath. The NGO denounced their complicity in brutal punishments, challenging ethical standards. This unholy alliance between medicine and the state raises alarms. It threatens professional integrity and human rights. His criticism highlights the moral issues of healthcare staff in state-sanctioned violence. Forced blindness is not just a single high-profile case. It is part of a trend of judicial punishment in Iran. Besides this, three others, including a woman, 
have faced similar repercussions. These cases show the Iranian legal system's commitment to Sharia law. It requires equal injury as punishment. Forced blinding as a punishment shows troubling support for brutal, outdated methods. Many human rights advocates oppose them. Beating for alcohol consumption. Under Islamic law, alcohol is illegal in Iran. Violators risk harsh, often public punishments. These sanctions are based on a strict interpretation of Sharia law. Muslims who consume alcohol face harsh penalties. Under Islamic law, those caught drinking can face up to 80 lashes. This punishment is both harsh and humiliating. Iran's Islamic Penal Code, Article 265, allows lashes for Muslims convicted of using alcohol. This high penalty shows the country's strict enforcement of its religious-based alcohol laws. The lashes are often given in public. This adds social stigma to the physical pain, making the punishment worse. A man known only as M.R. was a remarkable example of this cruel practice. Amnesty International condemned the Iranian authorities for publicly flogging M.R. in Kashmar. According to accounts, the individual was detained in 2006 and condemned the following year. The flogging occurred on a Tuesday in a public area. Local media widely distributed images of the event. These photos showed MR's terrible, humiliating punishment. They drew massive attention, both locally and globally. Amnesty International's condemnation highlights concerns about Iran's human rights including corporal punishment. Human rights defenders say these severe measures are brutal and ineffective. They do not address the root causes of substance dependence. Instead, they create a cycle of violence and stigma. Flogging for eating. During Ramadan, eating or drinking in public during Ramadan is a significant violation it is punishable by severe public flogging. Ramadan is a holy month of fasting for Muslims worldwide. In Iran, it is strictly regulated. Eating or drinking in daylight hours is both a crime and a violation of religious principles. The nation is committed to spiritual and moral codes in public life. Strict enforcement shows this dedication. It uses severe penalties to enforce them. According to Iran Human Rights, almost 90 cases were opened in the city of Kazvin at the start of Ramadan, 2017. The targets were those caught eating or drinking in public during the holy month's fasting hours. Mayor, a state-run media agency, claimed that the Kazvin prosecutor revealed these instances. It explained how 20 people received instant flogging punishments and fines the day they were arrested. These punishments were announced and executed on the same day. This showed the legal response's immediacy and severity. Iran's legal system firmly embeds the tradition of public flogging for such transgressions. According to Article 638 of the Islamic Penal Code, anyone who openly commits a sinful act in public places or highways may face two months imprisonment or up to 74 lashes in addition to the punishment for the crime. This article aims to ensure public behavior follows Islamic ideals. This is especially important during Ramadan, when fasting rules are strictly enforced. Human rights groups have condemned public flogging as a punishment. They call it cruel and demeaning. Lashes cause significant pain and public shame. They also traumatized victims. Critics argue that these actions violate human rights. They contradict ideas of fairness and decent treatment. Punishment for attending mixed gender gatherings. Iran has tightened its harsh gender segregation rules. It now targets mixed gender gatherings. This crackdown is part of a broader effort to impose Sharia law and traditional social norms. Attendees of mixed gender events, particularly those involving drink, suffer harsh punishments, including flogging. This method is becoming more common, especially among urban youth. They often get caught in the crossfire of strict regulations. Iranian officials recently made news with a significant operation in Semnan province. 
they arrested over 300 people for attending a mixed gender party. The deputy police commander reported that, while on patrol, police found a wild night party in a wedding hall on the outskirts of Sharud City. Officials quickly shut down this place, a mixed gender social spot. They cited trade breaches as one reason for its closure. Iranian Sharia law forbids unrelated men and women from mixing in social settings. This includes attending parties, dancing with the opposite sex, and any out-of-wedlock relationships. The restrictions aim to ensure tight gender segregation while upholding traditional moral norms. This means all events, including mixed gender ones, will be watched and punished. The recent rise in arrests for mixed gender parties is part of a more significant trend in Iran. There are many new stories of young people being imprisoned. This is for attending these events and for refusing to wear the mandatory hijab. The morality police enforce these rules. They have stepped up their watch of cafes and private gatherings to curb un-Islamic behavior. In 2016, a similar crackdown occurred in Tehran. Over 150 young people were arrested at a mixed-gender birthday party. State-run media said the event was in a garden west of Tehran, near an illegal music recording studio. Mohsen Kancherli, a top Tehran police commander, confirmed the operation. He cited the party's violation of social and Islamic rules. The authorities jailed the guests, mostly young men and women. It was part of a campaign to reduce so-called illegal social activities. The harsh punishments for attending mixed gender events show the regime's desire to uphold its version of Islamic law. Flogging for intimate relationships outside of marriage. In Iran, strict moral laws punish unmarried people in romantic relationships. Such relationships are punishable by flogging under the country's strict Sharia law. The punishment is 74 to 100 lashes. This punishment is a reminder of Iran's strict social norms. It shows the regime's dedication to conservative values. Recent reports have highlighted the use of such punitive sanctions. In a few days, Iranian courts imposed flogging for extramarital affairs. For example, in Tehran, two people, a man and a woman named Leila and Kivan, were sentenced to 99 lashes. The Supreme Court confirmed this ruling. It emphasized the judiciary's duty to uphold these harsh sanctions. On 9 January 2021, a man named Ramin was sentenced to 99 lashes for an extramarital relationship. The Supreme Court affirmed the court's ruling, which is now scheduled for execution. Such incidents show the regime's strict moral code. Even slight transgressions result in severe bodily punishments. The current punishments are part of a larger pattern of corporal punishment in Iran. A few years ago, two people from Golan were whipped in public for animal cruelty. This shows the regime's widespread use of corporal punishment beyond personal morality. The harshness of these punishments shows the regime's resolve. It will uphold its view of Islamic law, even at the cost of human dignity and freedom. An extreme example of this enforcement is the punishment for extramarital intimacy. Punishment for breach of public morals. Iran takes its moral rules very seriously. Breaking these rules brings harsh consequences. They cover many aspects of daily life. The strict enforcement means that even minor mistakes can lead to severe punishments. It makes it challenging for people to navigate their freedoms. In Kyazvin, a man endured 79 public lashes. This showed the nation's strict moral code. The state-run news reported this harsh penalty for troublemaking and security breaches. Such displays highlight Iran's hardline stance on law enforcement. They force citizens and observers to confront its harsh justice system. This was to emphasize the public nature of the punishment and warn others. This current occurrence is part of a larger pattern of harsh corporal punishment in Iran. In Torbat, a person was sentenced to 74 lashes for insulting police. These sanctions show the regime's strict public order. It harshly punishes any breach of moral and social norms. Flogging has often punished jailed political or social activists. 
Zora Sarv, a jailed social media activist, witnessed this firsthand. Sarv received 74 lashes, even though her penalty had been formally reduced to a fine. Garchok prison officials, where she was detained, required the flogging be done before considering her for a temporary leave. Sarv's case exposes the link between political opposition and corporal punishment in Iran. Sarv and activist Sina Modirzadeh were arrested in December 2019 for using Instagram. They were first jailed at a Tehran detention center run by the Revolutionary Guards. After being interrogated, she was sent to Garchak Prison in Varamin on November 11, 2020. Sarv was sentenced to three years in prison by the Revolutionary Court of Tehran. The charges against her included insulting the leadership and state propaganda. They reflected the regime's vague rules on dissent. The Iranian judiciary's support for corporal punishment is a societal issue. It goes beyond specific instances. Iran's judiciary said it sentenced eight people for economic misconduct. They got arrested and flogged. This includes three Kurds sentenced for attending a rally. It supported a referendum on Kurdish independence, which was a public order threat. Menare Mulavaise and Ayub Javanpur were sentenced to 50 lashes and a fine of 1.8 million tomans. This shows the regime's hostility to political activism and public protest. Punishment for journalistic crimes. In Iran, the press is tightly controlled. Critics of the authorities face severe consequences. Those who challenge the government or report on it can be whipped for publishing lies. This includes journalists and bloggers. The number of lashes can range from 40 to several hundred, depending on the severity of the case. The Iranian government's control over media and dissent is notorious. Critics of the regime often face harsh punishments for speaking out. A recent case that highlights the perils for journalists in Iran is that of Nazila Marufian. On 9 September 2023, Marufian was released on bail after appealing her conviction. Her release was a rare moment of relief in a time marked by severe repression. However, despite her temporary freedom, three women journalists who were arrested after September 2022 remain in custody. This situation underscores the ongoing dangers faced by journalists in the country. The Iranian judiciary is known for its severe sentences. On 7 September 2023, the Revolutionary Court in Tehran handed down verdicts against seven individuals arrested the previous year. These people either protested for workers' rights or documented such protests. Among those charged were Esmail Bakshi and Sepeda Golian well-known labor rights activists. They protested unpaid wages at the Haft Tape Sugarcane Company in Khuzestan. They reported being tortured during their detention in November 2018. The court's ruling was severe. Esmail Bakshi got 13.5 years in prison and 74 lashes. He was charged with spreading lies, insulting the Supreme Leader, and collaborating to commit crimes against national security. Others faced a combined potential prison term of 18 years. They were accused of being part of a group aiming to disrupt national security. This was based on their work with GAM, an online magazine that discusses social justice issues, including labor rights. The charges against them included spreading propaganda against the system and spreading lies. The harshness of these sentences shows a broader crackdown on dissent and independent journalism in Iran. The Committee to Protect Journalists has condemned the harsh treatment of journalists, in addition to recent cases. In July and August 2018, six journalists from a news site focused on the Dervish community were sentenced to prison terms ranging from 7 to 26 years. After their release, these journalists were publicly flogged and barred from engaging in political and social media activities. Journalists in Iran face a dire situation. Severe punishments and a controlled media stifle independent reporting and dissent. The harsh sentences and brutal treatment remind us of the risks of defying the government. We hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.